This video looks at how you might incorporate constraints into a DMC algorithm. So far, constraint code and development has focused on a GPC type of algorithm, but it was noted in Chapter 2 that DMC is popular in industry, so it would be useful to see how the implementation would differ if we were going to use a DMC algorithm. Now, as in the previous video, the viewers notes the key difference between DMC and GPC is the predictions. And obviously those predictions can affect the performance index and the constraints. First then a reminder of how we did GPC. We said we had a performance index that looked a bit like this. You'll see we had a quadratic part and we had a linear part. Now you notice that the prediction equations for GPC took this form H delta U future, P delta U past, Q Y past and the P and the Q appeared in this part of the performance index and the H in this part of the performance index. If we looked at the constraint inequalities, you also noticed that the P and the Q appeared down here and the H appeared down here, um, but the other bits are actually the same irrespective of your algorithm. So that was the GPC optimization. You can look back a couple of videos if you want to see these details more slowly. Now, how do things change if I go to DMC? So, the main change is a modification of the prediction equations, which was covered in Chapter 2. In particular, if you had GPC, we had prediction equations like this. You'll notice in particular a P and a Q here. If you had DMC, you had a slightly different bit on the right. So you need to be comparing these two bits I'm highlighting because the bits in red you'll notice are the same. Now what's different? These P's are actually not the same. I shouldn't really be using the same letter but um, that's maybe sloppy. You'll notice I've got a Q going to an L and I have a different P. But if you look at the structure of the prediction equations you see the structure is identical and that tells you Actually, implementing a constrained version of DMC is going to be equivalent to a constrained version of GPC because the structure of the prediction equations is identical. So all I need to do is substitute in different prediction matrices in the appropriate places. So my performance index now, you'll notice all I've done is put in the part of the prediction that comes from DMC instead of if I just put it up here, when you had GPC, it was a different P accepted, but you had here this type of form. So all I've done is replace the GPC prediction part with the DMC prediction part. Very easy to do. So in other words, this A parameter is calculated slightly differently, and that's the only change. If I look at the constraint inequalities, then again, you'll find the difference is very subtle. I've got a different P in this matrix here, and I've got L instead of Q in this matrix here. But they still multiply delta U past, they still multiply Y past. You'll get a different number of delta U past terms because you remember the P had a large number of columns, and so delta U past will have far more terms. But structurally, it looks the same. And if you look at the sort of inequalities you're constructing, you'll see structurally this looks the same. But the difference is that the dimensions of DDU and delta U past will be slightly different. The dimensions of DY and Y past could be slightly different. So the only change is in the output constraints part of the inequalities. That's this bottom block here. But the change is very subtle. So the DMC optimization then, you have basically the same as you had with GPC, but this A is computed slightly differently, this DDU is computed slightly differently, the DY is slightly different, delta U past has more terms, and the Y past will probably have fewer terms. And there's a summary of the terms, but I'm not going to dwell on this because you can pause the video and check this yourself very easily, should you need to. Now in summary, this video has shown how constraints can be incorporated into a DMC algorithm. But what we've not done is we haven't provided the MATLAB code because it's so similar to GPC that if you really wanted to be able to do it, then you just edit the existing GPC code and, and replace the P by the new P and the Q by the L, and that's it. 
So the only substantive change from GPC is in the change in the prediction equations. So wherever P appears, you've now got a slightly different P, and wherever Q appears, you now put L. But otherwise, it's identical, so you should be able to do that yourself.